Hola, welcome to my channel, Clear Vision. My name is Simon and I'm a psychotherapist. All the videos you'll find on this channel are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist and I discuss certain challenges and issues that people may have along their journey of life. This week's video is going to be all about masturbation, dispelling some of the myths around masturbation and some of the contrary advice, etc., and information that's out there on the internet. So stay tuned for more. As always, if you like what you see here, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Leave any comments in the comment section below, any feedback, anything else that you wish to know more of, and I'll endeavor to get back to you. Hitting that subscribe button really, really does help the channel um, and keep things moving. So without further ado, let's move on to the subject. So the aim of this video is to dispel some of the myths surrounding uh, masturbation out there. And when you trawl through the internet and through YouTube, there's an awful lot of um, contrary advice. So when you trawl through the internet, looking through social media and self-help stuff and YouTube video channels, there is so much contradiction between um, information given on all sorts of subjects. I mean, just to go off on a slight segue, if you're looking into fitness or diet or psychological help, um, whatever it may be, or, or your sport, there's always, you can always find the answer that you're looking for. So if you, if you uh, want to try a vegan diet, you'll find a whole ton of videos about how beneficial a vegan diet is. And if you want to eat meat, you'll go and find a whole load of videos which will tell you that a meat only diet is fantastic. I'm not, don't want to get into who's wrong, who's right, but some of my videos are about giving you some um, useful information, some true facts and allow you to make up your own mind. So in this case, masturbation, we can find lots of videos telling you that masturbation is terrible, that masturbation destroys relationships, etc., etc., and we can also find a whole load of videos that tell you that it's it's a healthy thing to do. So let's begin. First of all, masturbation is a normal, natural part of life. It is a healthy act. It is a healthy thing to do. It's a great tension release. It's a great stress release. It helps build self awareness. It helps build self-exploration. You learn how to turn yourself on, and if you know how to turn yourself on, you'll be able to help someone else and guide them through learning how to turn you on, and vice versa. They can you if you're in a when you're in a relationship. Masturbation or orgasm also releases endorphins and dopamine, which is fantastic for the body and the brain. So. All in all, masturbation is not a bad thing in and of itself. And I'm not going to tell you it's bad either. And so, given all of that information with the chemical cocktails that are released in your brain, self-exploration, what happens with regular masturbation is you get an improved mood and you get relaxation or an increased sense of relaxation. So all in all, it's quite a healthy thing to do. So let's address the self-exploration first of all because it releases dopamine, oxytocin, and various other chemicals within the brain, it's, you could see it as part of a bonding, and a, the self-exploration and kind of a bonding process. So you're actually learning to bond with yourself, first of all. You're learning to become familiar with your body. You're learning to become familiar with how your body reacts to certain sensory uh, stimulation. And you also get to use your imagination. A lot of people get to use their imagination. Generally, it starts with the imagine. It starts with a feeling of feeling um, turned on, sexually excited. There may be bodily sensations with it, heat rising, things like that, blood flow, maybe an erection, whatever. And then from that, people often dip into fantasy in their imagination, and then they masturbate, and then they have an orgasm, and it's all very wonderful and fantastic. So it increases your bodily awareness, it increases your bonding with yourself, so therefore it increases self-awareness, which are all great things. Unfortunately, within certain areas of society, masturbation is quite a taboo, it can be quite a sinful act, it can be um, something to be ashamed of, often people are filled with shame when they masturbate, and it tends to be looked down upon in some circles as you're unable to get a sexual um, partner or a romantic partner, you have to masturbate, therefore you're lonely and you're isolated and you're no good and you're a failure and all you're doing is sitting in your room 
um, masturbating. And these messages are not healthy because they create this taboo of some kind of inadequacy within um, the individual that they are unable to have sex with somebody else. So they're resorting to masturbation or that mas masturbation is far too much self-pleasure and therefore it is a bad thing to do. Again, I would strongly disagree with these um, opinions and these suggestions that come from certain areas of society. And I would urge you to question the motives behind such messages. Um, often for young people, adolescents, it's, um, you know, there's this kind of peer pressure. Have you, have you got a, are you having sex? Have you got a girl? Have you got a boy? You know, what, how, what are you, are you adulting? And how, you know, you can't masturbate because that just means that you're useless. So again, these are all things that, um, are to be well, frankly ignored. And again, masturbation is something that you should do at your own pace and begin to explore your body as much as you feel comfortable in doing so. What happen if we extend this into a sexual relationship, masturbation creates, um, what would we call it? Masturbation creates a confidence in your body. You're confident with your body. You can be confident in your nakedness. You can be confident in your vulnerability. Also, if you engage in mutual masturbation with your partner, you can, as I said at the beginning of the video, begin to explore each other and help teach each other how you like to be touched, how you like to be turned on. And there are so many ways in which to do it, so many ways to learn. So, and again, this becomes part of the bonding. You're, you're, you're vulnerable because masturbation has this stigma. You, you make yourself vulnerable, you connect together, you masturbate together, and this creates this, again, releases of dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and helps, uh, and helps cement, if you like, the bonding, the bonding ritual and bring yourself closer to your partner. And it also increase the, um, and increase the effectiveness of your sex life, if you like. I mean, if you can learn about it yourself and then you can teach the other about yourself and you can learn about the other as well, if you're willing, you have to be willing to learn, your sex life will just grow and, be and become more adventurous, more exciting, have a deeper connection, you will share more and that will spill out into your relationship as well and then spill out further into your external world. So all in all, there's absolutely nothing wrong with masturbation. It's quite healthy. Now let's move on to some of the more negative aspects of masturbation. I'm not really masturbation, but increased masturbation. And I'm not going to tell you how many times you should masturbate a week or anything like that. So I'm going to go down two avenues here. I'm going to go down isolation into fantasy, and I'm also going to look at the porn industry. What the visual or using porn as an aid. Let's go down to self-isolation first of all. So sometimes people find themselves, and it's not necessarily reserved for adolescents, but it can be increased within um, the adolescent demographic. It is if you are perhaps a little bit socially inept, not so great at um, connecting with people, not so great at, and you're not so great at obtaining yourself a sexual partner, Sometimes people find themselves, first of all, isolating anyway, so they withdraw from society in general. I think the Japanese refer to it as hikikomori, which is quite a problem amongst young people. The world out there is too complicated. I'm a little bit socially awkward, a little bit inept. I lack a little bit of confidence. I lack a bit of self-esteem. So therefore, it's easier for me to stay at home and delve into the world of my computer or my work or my art, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm going to isolate and become introverted. Now within that, sometimes people find solace within masturbation because it gives a dopamine release, etc, etc. It's a nice feeling having an orgasm. This can become too habitual and become an escape from actually getting yourself out there because the fantasy world you create in your head during masturbation or outside of masturbation. This, this is, I just, I'm known for going off at tangents, so I'm gonna keep it with masturbation. 
the fantasy world that you create through masturbation to stimulate yourself, to turn you on, where your imagination takes you is far more appealing than the real world. And so one finds themselves having several factors playing in here. First of all, you know, I'm socially withdrawn, socially excluded, which brings tension, which brings stress, which brings feelings of inadequacy. And then I masturbate and I feel better. So, and then the feelings come back. So I masturbate again and then I feel better again. And before I know it, I'm masturbating three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day whatever it may be, because my fantasy world is much better, my real world is quite stressful, quite lonely, and I alleviate myself from that through masturbation. That's one avenue that, you, that people can go down, which is extremely hard to break, because that's a lot more appealing than what is out there and having to go out into the world, build your self-confidence, build your self-esteem, connect with people, um, which are going to be quite disappointing compared to your master, uh, compared to your fantasies in your head, and self-isolating at home. The other avenue within that is within a relationship where master, but where the sex um, is decreasing and is less satisfying, less fulfilling for one or maybe both of you. Perhaps it's the original spark and passion that you had as a couple is gone. You know. Uh, for whatever reason, and it, it's probably nobody's fault. And masturbation then becomes again an escape from the mundane, and it becomes an escape into the fantasy world where you can play out your fantasies with other partners in your head, um, or even fantasize about your own partner in your head. And then again, that world, that fantasy becomes far more appealing than real life and you the more you lose the more you move into that the same as with the isolation the more you move into the fantasy and the act of masturbation the further away from reality you move and the fur the further away or, or the and the less appealing reality uh, seems and also sometimes you can then actually kind of influence your reality so your relationship starts to break down uh, because there's more distance put in or your relationship with the exterior world begins to break down because you're putting distance in because your fantasy world in your head is much more interesting added with the fact you have an orgasm at the end of it which cements it all with the release of the chemical cocktails within the brain that's the isolation route the other route to be very careful of is porn and i'm not going to bash the porn industry that's not what this video is about. So we're moving from natural sensory and imagination inducing orgasm, which is pretty much the same orgasm as you have in sex, which is bonding, emotional. Like I say, oxytocin is released, dopamine is released, this chemical cocktail of this kind of melding of bodies, if you like, or melding with yourself. It's um, a more fulfilling um, orgasm. When it comes to visual stimulation, the orgasm is much different. And the brain, uh, the areas of the brain, which during a normal orgasm are to do with uh, connection, empathy, stimu uh, feeling stimulation, sensory stimulation, moves to different areas of the brain. And it moves to the same areas of the brain as risk and reward. Uh, which are the same areas of the brain as addiction. So it's, it's risk taking. So now there's this dopamine pump. Now the dopamine hits big time. You are visually stimulated. Now the orgasm can be way more intense from the use of porn. Because you are visually stimulated, because the brain is bombarded with these images and this, this, it's playing out in front of you, this taboo, this, this nakedness, this, um, whatever fantasy, you can see it, you can see it, you can hear it. But I really like the way Jordan Peterson puts it. It's, it's Tinkerbell, it's, it's a fairy, it, it's, it's not real. So, but what this does do is, it, like I say, is it activates different areas of the brain. So the orgasm is completely different. The orgasm is based on the same um, uh, stimulation of risk and reward. So like with um, using various substances, gambling, adrenaline sports, it's the same kind of centers that start lighting up. The oxytocin is gone. 
in particular, you know, this kind of bonding has gone. This is now all about full on stimulation, which in and of itself, personally, I wouldn't say is a particularly bad thing. In, again, I'm gonna go with a, I'm gonna go with a kind of a Chinese uh, uh, philosophy here, you know, everything in moderation, there's no harm in dipping into that, but it's when we start to do it. And the trouble with it is, is it has this addiction building tendency with um, porn with the use of pornography. Now the wonderful thing about pornography in a kind of ironic way is that pornography is extremely inclusive. It doesn't matter what your fantasy is, how um, you know, obscure, taboo, depraved, whatever it may be, whatever you want to see, porn has it. Porn has a channel for it. There is an outlet for it. So ironically, it's quite inclusive. Possibly one of the most inclusive things in the world. I think it was Doug Stanhope who said that, or Ricky Gervais, I can't remember. Anyway, <clears throat> so now you're visually stimulated. Now the orgasm is way more intense, except, and the dopamine hit is high. And as people like Dr. Huberman and various other people point out, exactly from neuroscience, what then happens is the baseline of dopamine starts to drop. So like any addiction or any addiction process, now what's starting is you're having a spike, and then you're getting a then you're getting a trough, and the, but the whole time the dopamine base line is lowering, so you need more. So sometimes people find themselves well. I started off watching porn a couple of years ago, and now I'm two years into it, and I'm watching hardcore extreme porn to get the bigger hit of dopamine, to get more from, to get more stimulation. The other thing as well is it's a complete. It's, it's, it's your fantasy, almost, almost in a visceral way, but it's in a very extreme in your face way. And there you are, you can, you can search and you can find whatever you want to find. And again, for a lot of people, it can be more appealing than real life. There's no effort put into it. It's completely by yourself. And you're, you're vis but, you're, but you are operating on a visual stimulation system. Now what can happen, there's so many avenues where this goes quite bad. I'll try and do them in order. The first one is expectations from a relationship. So if you get yourself far too much into porn, you begin to change your expectation of what, you, um, of what happens within a sexual relationship. And often that can become more extreme, more demanding. Um, and actually sex is quite, can be quite difficult to get. It's not something, well, it depends, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Most, there's, for a lot of people, it's not like, ah, oh, I can now go out and I can very quickly search myself a partner who can fulfill all of my sexual fantasies that I've seen on porn, because I think that's normal. Because we tend to normalize stuff the same as we do with any addiction. It becomes normalized. And this is uh, quite, detrimental to the health of especially adolescents. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not preaching, I'm not lecturing, but a lot of what comes through my door are people who are feeling extremely pressured in by peers that they meet and they engage in and they have sexual encounters and like, I, I didn't want to do that. Or they think that's normal, you know, and this is for both females and males. So that's one avenue. Now, if you're in a relationship and you are delving into porn by yourself. Again, you can go back to the isolation thing. Perhaps that's more exciting than your actual relationship or your sex in your relationship, in which case it would be better to work on that and work on yourself and et cetera, et cetera, and communicate that and have those difficult conversations than to keep delving into porn. But a lot of people do that because it's easy. And then again, what happens is the adverse effect of sex becomes more disappointing. Oh, or masturbation becomes more disappointing or you start to only need the visual aid. This is another avenue. Once that kicks in and you need that visual stimulation, it can affect your libido. It can affect your sexual arousal um, and performance. And again, you would have to find every person's limit as to what limit they hit and then this begins to happen is going to be different. For some people they can, I don't know, masturbate to, to porn once a day and still have a healthy sex life. Other people can't, you know, or other people, they just keep building it up and up and up and up. So again, this is a bit like when it comes to any addiction, um, alcohol, drugs, uh, gambling, 
sports, whatever, you will have your own ceiling at which point you tip over or which point you go through and then you'll pass that point of no return without help. But everybody's different and everybody's ceiling is at a different level and you don't know that ceiling or where that ceiling is until you hit it. So, to continue. Now, then there's the other side to porn when it comes to stimulation, where you are being stimulated by witnessing other people having sex or masturbating. So, now, your brain will begin to change. Your brain, it will begin, it does actually begin to influence the architecture of your brain. And your, your responses to stimulus changes. So, once upon a time where you were stimulated by being next to your partner who was naked in bed and having kisses and finding that stimulating and then at least to one thing to the next and you're having sex. Now, you're stimulated by watching other people have sex. And so you're, it's, it's again, it's distancing yourself. You're actually, you're actually isolating yourself. You're removing yourself from the act of masturbation or from the act of sex via watching someone else do what it is that you probably want to do but feel inadequate to do or can't do or what, when you do do it, it's not fulfilling enough. And so you are, you are pulling yourself away again without realising that you're doing it. Both the isolation route, the delving into fantasy and the use of porn end up at the same result, which is more, more isolation, more need for stimulation, less feelings of fulfillment within um, your sex life and a general, general kind of difficulty. And again, this will spread into your world. And if you speak to anybody who's become addicted to porn or who's, who's ended up withdrawing completely from society, it's, it's quite a long road back and it takes quite a lot of self-discipline. So, and a lot of people didn't realize they were slipping into it. They didn't realize they were sliding down that slope into that and then they would have to crawl out of that pit and do an awful lot of work on themselves. So again, as an overview, porn visual stimulation is not necessarily bad. I'm not going to go into the ethics of the porn industry. Um, it's a minefield. But there is nothing wrong with visual stimulation. Again, if it's used in moderation. And my last point I'm going to draw from some of the more philosophical Eastern religions and practices, Buddhism and Hinduism, which don't particularly have a moral judgment on masturbation or indeed sexuality. What they do kind of point towards is, and I think it's a really, really valid point, your intention behind your stimulation, your intention behind your masturbation, your intention behind your sex life, your orgasm. What is the intention? Are you looking for release from stress and therefore end up using your partner or yourself uh, to do that? And you do that more and more rather than addressing de-stress, rather than addressing the reason why you're stressed. So you use it as a kind of a fix. Um, are you isolating yourself and using masturbation and to, to help alleviate the feeling of isolation, etc., etc.? So it's the intention behind it. Are you looking to use and abuse um, and to gain some kind of, um, I mean, we're all looking to gain satisfaction, but it's very, very egotistical, egotist, uh, egoistically based, um, and a very selfish um, pursuit. And I'm talking more about sex, but masturbation as well. So is it actually damaging you? Then second to that, there's another message on the internet, which goes on about, you know, if you uh, masturbate too much, um, you lose your drive, it's distracting, um, you lose your kind of your creative energy. Now this, this moves more into kind of um, the Chinese based idea of qi, which is the life force that throws, that, the life force that flows through you, this kind of creative energy, this life force. And by creative, it can be creative in terms of artistically and also creative in terms of procreation. So, and again, you, I, I, as I understand it, there's a limited amount of life force which you have, and with each orgasm, or with each ejaculation, you lose some of that life force. 
Well, I'm not sure if 100% if that's true, but what it does kind of point towards, which is the same as the neuroscientists point towards, as well as psychology in general, is that too much masturbation, too much stimulation, again, lowers the dopamine baseline. And you keep needing that hit and that hit and that hit. And then all your energy becomes focused on raising that baseline. And you find yourself less driven in other pursuits within your life, de-energized, you could say too relaxed. And these are points also worth looking at. If you are trying to drive your life forward, if you are um, trying to achieve more, but you are masturbating as a distraction, and you could say it's like Netflix and chill with yourself, then chances are you might need to pull back a bit, hold on to some of that creative energy. And if you're into chakras and things like that, you know, that, that kind of sexual chakra, that creative chakra, hold on to that energy a little bit more and use it somewhere else. You might find your actual need for stimulation, your libido starts to calm down a bit because it has a creative outlet. There is a kind of country side to that as well. And again, it's all about finding balance and equilibrium where actually some of that um, explosive orgas orga orgasmic, uh, some of that explosion within the brain that the orgasm produces in the relaxation in the body and the endorphins and the dopamine and everything all flowing around the body actually also induces and feeds the creativity process. So again, it's finding that balance between being driven and, and ambitious or moving your life forward or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and want to achieve balancing that with the pursuit of orgasm or sexual satisfaction or self-satisfaction, whatever it is, how you ever want to term it. And again, it's about finding that balance. So with all of these, it's finding the balance. And if you find yourself tipping the balance into isolation, more porn, more fantasy in your head, and it's better than reality, or it's holding you back because it's actually de-energizing you, then maybe it's something you need to look at and, and again everybody's different and everybody will reach that point and that point will be at a different place for different people so it's about again becoming aware of yourself checking in with reality really being quite honest with yourself you know I'm masturbating a lot so actually I'm it's 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 now got to a point where it's I'm completely distracted I'm not doing anything or I'm masturbating so much that you know I'm not particularly interested in my partner because sex is a bit plain or uh, so overstimulated by porn that you find yourself, you know, running home as quick as you can to jump into bed with your tablet and, uh, and watch some porn and have that release. Then you need to look at other areas of your life which may be feeding into that cycle and learning how you can break them. So I hope that helps. As I said, please hit the subscribe button. It really, really does help the channel. Um, have a look through the playlist. I talk about other things such as narcissistic relationships, abuse, healing from a broken heart, moving your life forward and various other things. I delve into mythology and certain issues that people face like grief and bereavement, depression, etc. So have a look through the channel. I look forward to seeing you again and I look forward to responding to some of the comments in the section, uh, some of the replies in the comments section. Until I see you again, please take good care of yourselves. Adios.